YouTube, it's Lena, and I do have my little Zazzy here. <sighs> she she seems to be the one that really wants to follow me in here recently, so she's the one that gets to hang out on the dog couch, as it has come to be known, or my dog couch at least. So I am here with you with my empties. So. If you're tuning in for the first time, I like to do my makeup first because that's what everybody really wants to see. Then I go into full size, a travel size, and then I go into, you know, samples, like foil samples and sheet masks so that if you want to tune out, you can, but then you don't get to see my numbers because I do post numbers at the end of like what of everything I've used up and, you know, how much it's all worth. So let's pull out the makeup bag first. First, I have the N Beauty Project Power Up Dual Face Setting Mist. I got this in a BoxyCharm and I really did like it. Like it said, it is a dual phase mist. It smelled really good. It did help take some of the powderiness down because I have to put on a lot of powder to keep me matte. But this gets rid of some of the dusty effect without taking away the, you know, setting of my face. And then I top it off with a matte setting spray. I know I'm extra, it's okay. You can call me extra, but I did really like this for that. It is a little expensive at $32 for me to go through it in about three months, but I did really enjoy it. So I, I have a lot of set of sprays of this type to get through before I consider repurchasing anything, but I did really like this. And especially if I could get a bit of a discount, I would definitely consider repurchasing. I have two mascaras. I have the Maybelline Lash Sensational. Now I'm trying to go cruelty free or not tested on animals specifically. So this is not something that I would even purchase for that alone. It was a pretty good mascara. Like if you like, it says Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect. I like a lot more volume to my mascara, but this was still really nice. You definitely get that like fanning effect with your lashes. Now this I really liked as a layering mascara, it's almost like a mascara primer, but it's not white because I hate those. This is the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. Now this is a very expensive mascara. I got this one in a FabFitFun box. You can't sit in my neck, sweetie. But I really enjoyed it as a layering mascara. That's my ear. I wouldn't purchase the full size for that again, but let's say I knocked my mascara numbers down by a good bit and I wanted a layering mascara, I would pick this up as a mini because the mini is only like $13. And I throw everything out in three months anyway as far as mascaras are concerned, whether they still have product in them or not, I have very sensitive eyes, they can, get they can get irritated and even infected very easily. so. I don't like to play with, with those. Anything that touches like my actual eyeball in any way, not like eyeshadow that goes on top, but like anything that can actually touch like my waterline or anything like that, I really don't like to play with those expiration dates. So, because this did like really separate my lashes and that's what I really like for a layering mascara or mascara primer, however you want to look at it. Because like, Heck, it might just be something to do with the brush because it's a very separated brush right there. Please don't lick that, sweetie. I can't imagine that's good for you. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, I really like this. I would reconsider purchasing the mini. Let's see, here we have the Ordinary High Adherent Silicone Primer. I did like this for filling in the pores in my face. It's only like five bucks, so I would definitely consider repurchasing that. I have other primers to get through first though, so I don't need to. I have the AOA Studio Perfect BB Cream. This is from the Shop Miss A website. It was only a dollar. This is in the shade Fair, and it's not a perfect match for me, but it's such light coverage that it doesn't, it's not as important to be a perfect match, let's say. I say this being a little too different shades right now just because I want a little ham on the bronzer trying to make up for the fact that my foundation was too pale so now it just looks all weird to me but uh 
yeah. This has too light of coverage for me, and it only has like six shades, so I don't want to be purchasing foundations that don't have a lot of shade ranges in them. Even though, like I said, multiple skin tones could get away with each shade. But also, I want a little more coverage. Like, I don't necessarily want high coverage, but... And I know it's a BB cream, it's, they're gonna be very light coverage anyway, but this was like almost no coverage. Like I was beefing this up with a lot of concealer. So, not for me. I have the Becca Fresh Light Priming Filter. This is one of my favorite primers, especially to wear on days where I don't wear a lot of makeup. Unfortunately, Becca is going out of business, so I can't buy it anymore, but I do have two full-size backups. So, I know a lot of people are not into buying backups, but I, I'm fine with it in that case. Something that I can't get anymore. Stop chewing on that. The Maybelline Master Glaze by Face Studio Cream Blush. This is in the shade Make a Mauve. I did really love these. I had another one way back when, but I finished it up because it was a more it was an easier shade to use. But you know, it's from Maybelline. They don't make it anymore, so I can't repurchase even if I wanted to. Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. I do really like this. It's very expensive, but when I can get it at a discount, I tend to pick it up. I picked up like a couple of those minis when I, they went, when they left Sephora. Something that I can't pick up and I don't even want to, the YSO Touche Clot Blur Primer. I don't like this. It feels heavy and it smells weird. Something I wish I could repurchase, the Clinique Almost Lipstick in Pink Honey. My favorite shade is the Black Honey, specifically. It's just like a light tinted lipstick, but they feel really nice on the lips. I wish Clinique was cruelty free, but I got them finished up. I wish these were still around too, but this was like a limited edition thing. This is the Hard Candy Color Correct Expert Cream. Mine is in the shade, I think it's like light peach. And this was great for correcting this like little darkness that I get right here under my eyes. So, and it lasted me forever. Even though the packaging, as you can see, was kind of dying on it. I wish I could get it again, but it was limited edition. But if they came out with these in the permanent line, I would totally repurchase at some point. Here's, I actually have my perfume in here too, but First we have the So Susan Cosmetics Dream Maker Light Shifting Highlighting Cream. I did like this. It's $21 for this, but especially if you're just using this on your face, it lasts forever. I was also mixing this into, I was mixing this in the foundations and I was mixing this into body lotions because I'm not a major cream, like liquidy creamy highlighter person. But if you are, this was really nice. Here we have the Urban Decay Eyeliner in Alkaline. I do really like the color. I don't know if they have anything in their permanent line, that kind of reddish brown shade, but uh, this was part of the Naked Heat collection. I do really like their eyeliners, even if they are kind of expensive. And I have a perfume. This is the Nest Black Tulip Rollerball. Love this. Would repurchase a full size at some point. I'm trying to finish a perfume that my mom got me for Christmas right now. Let's see. I have a Buxom lip gloss. Love those. I have a sample of that. And I have the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. Nothing that I was in love with that I would miss. Why don't you run around on the floor? Go play with something. First, cotton swabs. They're great. Clean your ears. Do whatever you need to do with them. Here is a, what's it called? Hand sanitizer. This is the Scent Theory Keep Clean Moisturizing Hand Sanitizer with Aloe. Worked fine. My mother gave this to me last year and I finally finished this big thing up. Most of the ones that I have are just a little like pocket back looking ones, but she gave me that one so I worked on it. Do Body Shop Juicy Pear Body Butter. This was a holiday scent from one year. I wish that I could repurchase from the Body Shop, but they're kind of doing the MLM thing on the side, so I don't really want to support that. It was really nice though. Here we have the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing Moisture CC Cream for hair. 
I did like this find, but as far as I could tell, they test on animals, so I would not repurchase. Here's the Zany Laney Station body scrub. Scent notes are acorns, marshmallows, and woods. I did really like this. Unfortunately, they went out of business. Here's the Julep, your cuticles look thirsty, fast absorbing cuticle cream. I'm not a cuticle cream, cuticle oil person. I use this up as a hand cream to get it used up. It was nice, it smelled a little weird, but it did moisturize both my cuticles and my hands, but I don't think they make this anymore, at least not in this packaging. Like they seem to make it in a little tub now, but I still wouldn't repurchase. Also would repurchase this, the Malin and Goats Recovery Treatment Oil. I have found that unless it's like a retinol oil that I see like major results from, I tend to not use face oils. I wound up using this up as like a bath oil just to get it, you know, used up and not sitting around going to waste in my collection. I got this in a Nipsey bag and I've kind of learned my lesson about facial oils unless it's like a retinol oil that I can see results from. I'm just not going to keep them anymore if they come in bags because I've never bought one myself. Hey, have a Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I actually just finished another one of these. I love these. If I didn't have, I usually pick up their holiday kits every year, but because I had so many left over from the year before, I didn't pick any up in 2020. But so now I'm trying to work through my back stash of those a little bit so that if I want to, I can purchase them this year. Here we have the Fourth Ray Beauty Radiate Vitamin C Serum. This is a nice little vitamin C serum. It's a little greasy for me. Like you can kind of see in there, it's like when you have to shake up because it's dual phase. If you're a little bit drier skinned than I am though, because I'm ridiculously oily skinned, you might like this better than I did, but it's not bad because it did sink in pretty well. Just the initial feeling on my face, I didn't love. Here's Purology's Color Fanatic Multitasking Leave-In Spray. Uh, I don't think they make this anymore, but it was nice. Purology is really expensive though. See, it even it smells like a like, high-end salon thing, but... Here we have the Hemp's Sweet Pineapple and Honey Melon Bath Balm. I really enjoy Hemp's Bath Balms. They are kind of expensive, but they smell really nice, so I tend to repurchase them. Although, now that I have found the Shop Missé Bath Balms, I may not be repurchasing them as much. This one is the Amon Sherry Cherry one. I want to sort of picture of it here. It was bright as red in my bathtub, but it smelled amazingly of cherries. And not only did it, you know, fizz and do all the fun stuff, it actually stayed afloat, which uh, the hemp ones especially do not. They sink to the bottom. So smelled really good. It was fun to look at, only a dollar. I think I'm gonna be sticking with these from now on. And I have a ton of them, so. The Nivea Cream Tin, uh, this was really thick. I ended up using it up on my feet. Nivea is not cruelty free, so I wouldn't repurchase anyway. Here we have the Pure Lease Blue Lotus Seed Mud Mask and Exfoliant. I did like this, and I really like a lot of Pure Lease products. Now, there are some masks that I like better than this to get like that deep clean feeling, but if I got this in a bag or like a subscription bag or something, I would still use it. I just don't think that I would pay their full price of, I want to say, $42 or $48 for this product. It's good though, just not quite, you know, almost $50 good. Uh, Zany Laney Body Spray. This is a silent breath. Fresh rain, ozone, and lotus blossom. It's based off of uh, Link from Zelda. Seriously wish that I could re-get their stuff. Maybe they'll come back someday. Tarte. Well, this is sugarous, but it's by Tarte. Don't hate hydrate oil-free moisturizer. I love gel moisturizers. The only problem that I had with this was that three days worth came in it. Like, nothing came in this. That made me mad. But the moisturizer itself was good. Let's see. I have the St. Ives Lip Scrub and Sweet Passion Fruit. I don't think they sell this one anymore, but they do still seem to sell them. This is good if you like a light lip scrub, like not super gritty, but enough to do the job. And it smelled really good. I imagine their other ones smell just as good. So St. Ives is apparently cruelty free as far as I can tell, so I would possibly repurchase. The Aveda 
Invati Advanced Scalp Revitalizer. I, to this day, am not entirely sure what this is supposed to do. But rubbing it into my scalp, it had a like cooling sensation that I really enjoyed. And my scalp does act up a lot, so maybe this helped with that some. I'm not entirely sure. I liked it, but Aveda is very expensive. <laughs> For me, not being entirely sure what it does, you know? Finally, before I get into sheet masks, I have the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream. Now, they don't sell this at Ulta anymore, but they still seem to at Sephora, so... Ulta rotates stuff in and out a lot, so I'm not that surprised they only carry one of their eye creams. I really liked this. Like, I know some people say that eye creams are just moisturizer repackaged, but maybe it's because I use such a light moisturizer on my face and I want something a little bit more on my eyes that I see a difference. Even though my under eyes are very oily too, but for some reason... If I use too light of an eye cream, I don't see results, but if I use a nice thick one like this, I do see good results. So I would consider repurchasing this in the full size. I did really like it. And IT Cosmetics is high end, but not, you know, $130 for half an ounce of eye cream. High end. So. Now, for sheet masks, I have all of these. I have the Hell Organic One A Day Green Mask. This is for pore refining, and while you can't shrink your pores, you can make them look a little bit smaller for a short amount of time. I do think that this helped with that. Now this one smelled amazing. It did give some moisture. It's the Cream Shops Peaches and Cream Fusion Sheet Mask. I enjoyed that. The Oka Whitening Sheet Mask. Whitening does not mean bleaching your skin. It just means to brighten your skin a little bit, and this did help with that. I have two from Iceland, the peach and the papaya. They both smelled great and felt good on the skin. The Huang Jisoo Red Fruits Brightening Mask was also nice. And the Vita Masks Multivitamin Mask was really super moisturizing, but I'm not sure $8 a mask is worth it. I have four from this Butanique Beauty Guardian Angel Revitalizing Eye Gels. I put them back in the box when I finished all of them, but they are like right here. <sighs> I have a picture of me with these on. They're like actual wings. Now, do I think that these helped depuff my under eyes a bit? Yes, but they had glitter on them and I think they left behind glitter under my eyes, which where I don't want a bunch of noticeable glitter. I do have another pack of these that I got from FabFitFun, so I will use them up, but I don't think I would purchase these. Let's see. I have a bunch of these. The, they are the Orchid Skin Smoky Under Eye Clear Gel Patches. I love these because they actually like stick to your skin while still depuffing. So you can like do put them on, do your makeup, and then pop them off, which is what I use these for. That's why I had so many last month. Um, I'm almost out of the other kind that I have because I got sent these for, for review from 0 0.8 liter. And once I run out, I might repurchase these. Now, I really love the Wander Beauty Gold Eye Mask because they stay in place like these, although they're not sticky. They just, they're so thin that they don't move. The thing about them is versus these, these are cooling because of the patch themselves. It's not like a serum-y thing. The Wander Beauty ones have a serum on them that while they're awesome at night, I can't necessarily use them while I'm putting on my makeup because they leave a lot of serum behind that I would have to wait to go away. Whew. So I might be switching. These are really, really nice for that sort of thing. And I have two of these. The SF Glow Suns Out Pouts Out Gold Foil Lip Mask. I do think these softened my lips a little bit. They look insane because they are literally like leopard print all over all over your lips. Would I buy these? No, I got these from FabFitFun, but they work. <laughs> Let's see. I have a Tresemme Botanique Color Vibrance and Shine Intensive Mask. I think this works fine, but they don't sell it anymore. And I have the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothing Priming Moisturizer. This was nice, but Nothing I would miss. 
and the Soap and Glory Best Washes Uplifting Body Wash. Also nice, but nothing that I would necessarily miss. So like I said, all numbers I will insert at the end. I don't have any empties goals this year. I have a thing for makeup, but nothing for just empties in general. So I'm not pushing myself as hard this year as far as, like last year I wanted to hit 750 items. So I was using up a lot of foils, a lot of minis. I'm trying to focus a little bit more on my full sizes this year, although I still have plenty of minis to focus on. So don't get me wrong there. So if you're interested in numbers like I am, just stay through till the end. And that is basically it. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you later. Bye.